In order to make money in your business, you need to understand how money flows through your business. Ask most people how much profit they make. They'll tell you, oh, I make 15 cents on a dollar. Not true. You don't make a cent until you paid your bills. So you have to start with some money, whether it's invested money or whether it's sales dollars. And out of that money, you have to first pay for the raw materials to make the product that you sold. Or if the service, any true variable cost. And anything that's left over then has to go to pay for your monthly bills. So you pay for your raw materials and what's left there goes paid for the monthly bills. And you keep doing this until you reach the time in the month where all of your bills are paid. And it's only at that point where you can even start to make money. So the more you sell after you paid the bills in any month, the more profit you make. Show me where they show you this in the P&O. So I want to go into a little bit more detail. Um, first step is we need to put boundaries. We need to have a beginning and an end in any kind of financial or operational reporting. The period that most companies use is the months. Let's say you start out with about $100,000 in working capital. Raw materials cost is 33% and our other variables which are anything that goes up and go down in expense directly related to how many products or services you sell and is 5% and that means there's about a 38% uh, variable cost. And the monthly nut, the bills that have to be paid above and beyond variables comes to about $50,000. The question is how much, if a 38% is true variable cost, how much money do we need in sales to be able to pay the $50,000 every month? To find the sales needed, we need to find out the inverse of the true variable cost, 38%. So that leaves 62% as the amount that's left over to initially pay the... So we're going to divide. 50 by 62% because 50 is 62% of what amount and that is $80,645 approximately. Let's pull up the little calculator. So $80,645 times 0.38 equals 30645 and that, of course, leaves the 50000 that we need to pay our bills. But that 30645 needs to come from somewhere. So where does it come from? It comes from our working capital. Financial accounting looks at things as fixed units. For instance, if you want to understand the business, you take a look at the balance sheet. But the balance sheet doesn't show you how the company is moving in time. It shows you a snapshot of one point of how the company is working. And because of natural variation, that really isn't going to tell you what you need. You need to have a number of snapshots that are in a moving picture to see where the company is trending to really understand what's happening with your business. In cost accounting, what the operator is left with, you know, if I sell something for $10, I have three dollars in cost for the goods and then I have maybe another uh, 550 in contribution towards the overall monthly bills and that leaves me uh, 10 minus 3 is 7 minus 550 leaves me with a dollar 50 in net profit and that's kind of how I measure things but as we can see that doesn't really model what's happening uh, in the business where the flow is taking place Op, the person operating and the person in sales doesn't really have the information they need. All they know is we've got to sell a lot. And we handle that in financial county usually by having a budget or having a sales goal based on past history and you know, the sales department's best guess at how much they could sell something like this. Uh, assuming that the company at breakeven is doing about 
30, 35% of its capacity. Started out with $100,000 in working capital, spent about thirty thousand six hundred of that let's say and roughly and then we had about had bought us about eighty thousand dollars of sales uh, again roughly and that left us with fifty thousand dollars in bills paid uh, by the time we've sold the eighty thousand dollars and reserves are back to one hundred thousand sell another hundred thousand more in product that's our goal compared to last year and since we don't have to uh, pay the fifty thousand everything above the cost of goods go directly to profit so that's going to give us a profit over in this column now of sixty two thousand dollars we paid off all our bills we sold another hundred thousand out of that hundred thousand we made sixty two thousand dollars but in a company that was functionally using uh, operational reporting they would see that beyond the eighty thousand dollars they had a lot of room to play in the bills were paid and though they currently had a cost of goods and variables 38 percent and a net of 62 percent anything they made above the 62,000 that they were going to make according to the plan would be to their advantage in fact is anything they made overall above the 15 percent net profit they usually make even with just one penny is to their advantage so they would start strategizing about ways to increase the sales one of those ways is to find, for instance, a customer from another area, another country, if we're export, where you can sell product without interfering in your regular markets until you get to the full capacity of the plant, which let's just say is $500,000 worth of sales. And they slash that 62%. Something would never occur to them to do based on a cost accounting scenario. How would they pay the bills? Let's just say they were able to get the sales all the way up to $500,000. So, in the financial accounting scenario, driven by budgeting, and past history, the company projected itself and it was expected of sales and operations to earn $62,000 in cash, which would then be added to the 100000 of the previous month. By using operational accounting that led to an understanding of when when the original one hundred thousand dollars had been returned to the bank in full and when every dollar of sales was making more money because the bills were paid they came up with strategies that made more on the same original thirty thousand dollar investment let's say we've got a, another ninety thousand dollars in profit and we're talking about beginning the next month not with a hundred thousand dollars not with a hundred sixty two thousand dollars but with two hundred and fifty two of course minus the cash we started with a hundred thousand dollars that leaves a hundred and fifty two thousand dollars profit and the only out-of-pocket investment from your original 100000 was $30,600. In the first scenario, based on budgeted sales goals, for every dollar invested, your return on investment was $2.04. 
But on your second scenario, which was driven by having good information that led to good understanding and better strategic decisions at 152,000, five times, which means for every dollar invested, rather than just making two dollars and four cents, you made five dollars. And waiting around until you get the reports, the financial reports, see if you did it, if you made the plan, is just not as effective as knowing. One, about the time in the month where you break even. That means your bills are paid. Two, a measure of the flow through of profit dollars, which is zero until the bills are paid, but increases greatly after the bills are paid. That this leads to simplified reporting, nothing more than approximations, and that, that can scare you. The truth is, the financial reports are approximations too. But operational reports can be used to make actionable decisions that can help the company make more profit. In the next segment, please forgive the use of the puppy treats. And the more times in that month that you can turn your profit dollars back into product and sell it, the faster your profit will grow. That's why we call it the repeater effect. <laughs>